Hi guys, I ignore the stuff on top, but I am on with a very special person with me today. I'm special? What the fuck? Also, damn your monetization. I already cussed twice. <laughs> okay. So what do we have in this box today? All I'm gonna say is that it's not what you may think it is, because it looks like a first alert, like, SMI or SMICO box, but it's something very special in there. Only one of three that are known to exist. Let's do this. Look at the code to this. There it is. And you... Hell yeah. I don't He's know. I don't know why that happened. Okay. Anyways, back to the video. I already see it in there. Now, this may look like your ordinary... The cover's falling off. This may look like your ordinary SAEDFC, but what if I take off the cover? Yep. Wait, what if I show the sides? What is this? I wonder what that says. A Demco? A Demco? <laughs> <laughs> Type shit. Right there is the model. It's a little rubbed off, but you can see there's it very a, well. We've known this model. There's a little paint on it. Yeah, we've, so. known, we've known this model for such a long time, so I don't even need to say it. No worries, I'll say it anyway. Model number 1689. Also, notice that address. They have a Schindler HT at that location. Planning something for the heat. There's another label on the back. Yep. Should be right there. Distributed by Demco. What's very weird is, like, having one of these has, like, this weird base where it's, like, these extra things, like, stick out. It's deeper. So weird because of the whole bracket situation. So here's the actual circuit board itself. We have your average squealer, got your sensor. It's basically your same internals as your regular 79R type unit, but with a slight twist to it. It's like a completely different circuit board. You got your little switches right there for wireless interconnect stuff. Like, it's very weird because it has, like, this interconnectivity feature. I never really owned, like, one of these units that's, before. Uh, that's for connecting to, like, a central receiver. It's not interconnect. Yeah. But, yeah, that actually came out of my house that I just moved to. Yeah, you should tell you should tell us about yeah. the story about how this happens. All right, so. After I put the cover back excuse on. Excuse me. Yeah. So, your touring house is in October, and, you know, I found a bunch of rare bullshit i.e. FX-1020-0905, Blackhorn, etc. TC-49D, no can to SMBs. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> I did find an RFSM set. I found a set of RFSMs, too. But in the house that we ended up moving to were three of those Ademco Model 1689s. And I'm just thinking, oh, like I... Like, I'm going up the stairs seeing them for the first time. I'm like, oh, SADFCs, that's nifty. I'm just, I'm looking at it, and I see the fact that it's got the thicker is. I'm like, oh, shit, SA78RF. <laughs> I go to the apartment, and notice one without a cover, so I take a closer look at the label. Oh, my God, that's a Demco? I just noticed something. Unheard uh, of. Yeah, unreal. Uh, whatever. You dove but, into the realms of the yeah. fiction. But, yeah, we came back in March to move in, came back in May to move in, and then I just took them down here about a month ago, although the one that James has has only been off the ceiling for about a, a week or two. Yeah, he us. took it down, and he was able to get it over to me. The other one that's coverless um, is going to Kiara. If you guys don't know, um, Ben has an ADFC cover, so it's going to be the Frankenstein version that Kiara is going to have, which I'm pretty sure he's doing a trade with, so... Yeah. Yep. As for the... I never actually went into the unit itself. This one's the one that's dated 81, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like October of 81. Yeah. Like October... That awkward... 29th, I think? I don't know. That like awkward moment. That awkward moment I could get one of these before an ADFC. Yeah. 
Speaking of ADFC, it's like obviously it has the regular ADFC. If you've ever seen um uh, the videos on the seventy eight RF, which I, I know Nathaniel has, and I think someone else has one. I'm just forgetting. Yeah, I've also got my own video on this. Yeah, Idigo obviously uh, made his videos on this. You, I'll link those in the description. You should definitely check those out first. Here's the here's all the label stuff. Yeah, check James's video first because he's more popular because yes. Also, if I don't sound too great, uh, I'm not do I'm not feeling the best right now, but I'm feeling yeah. well enough to exist here. So yeah. Yeah. This is honestly not in bad shape for as old as this thing is. Yep. Yeah. Really like this. You could tell the um, uh, the thickness, like really well. Yeah. And then of course here's the back label. Here's something else I also want to point out. Brk. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one that I haven't tested like at all with like the button or anything. It should be working. It didn't do any chirps because that was actually the one that had a good battery in it. So, yeah. Also, if you do put a battery in it, it will make a little noise. Just let me know. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what happens. I doubt I could let this go off for long, but I will. Gosh. Did you break it? No. It's good. Did make a noise. Okay, yeah, it works. Okay. So the thing is, um, I can't let this go on for too long, but at least I know it works. The um, the thing, uh, but I will, um, make a separate video of this testing. If you guys don't know, these units actually do a pulsing squealer. It's really cool. Um. Yeah. Yeah, um, obviously I'm a little scared to test it right now because it's a little early, but it does work. So I'll throw in a separate video of it testing. All right, here is the testing portion of my recently acquired 1689 that I got from it ago. This is being combined with my unboxing video. So as you can see here, the internals, my dog's barking. When you power it on, it makes a it makes a loud sound while the LED, which I never mentioned, um, turns on and off. So we're gonna get this cover back on. And now let's hear what this thing sounds like. So obviously it's gonna sound like a regular Kobishi CLB27, but it's gonna have a little twist. I love that. It's a really, really slow pulse. And since it's really loud, it's actually really loud compared to other Kobishi CLB 27s I've heard. And I think, um, I'm gonna cover up the horn. Yeah, the, um, when you hold down the button, um, the LED, um, is steady but when it pulses it like turns off for a split second when it goes into a, another pulse so as the squealer horn goes from one pulse to the next the led goes off and back on while you're holding it down while it transitions to another pulse so i find that really really cool it always does that while it's testing and then um since this is a pretty special unit, um, uh, I decided, why not? There you go. There you go. Alright, let's unplug the battery before this thing sounds off again. 
Ah, God. All right. Well, that was your testing portion to the Adumco 1689 unboxing. Back to the actual video. So, yeah. That is, I, what I will do though is, do, do these have dying sounds? Shit, I don't know. I will take that as a no. Yeah, I don't think it does. Yeah, obviously, um, typical Colby sheet, CLB 27 horn. Standard as always. Still yeah, a rip. It's actually got a bit of a different horn. Yeah. It's a really, really cool unit. Anyways, um, that is going to do it for this video. Um, big thanks to Itigo for sending this out. Um, You're welcome. And if you would like to say bye. Give me a second. I just heard aww. That's all I heard. I don't know if it came through. But yep. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll see you all in therapy. Mm, plankton moment. <laughs>